cost per road in New York City. Right? Before modern transportation, before there was cars, rentals, or buses, they were horses. Uh, in 1880s, there were the New Yorkers were taking hundred millions of horse car trips per year. Right? And in 18, in late 1880s, the population of horses were 100,000, providing the service of transportation of people and also goods in New York City. On an average, a horse produces 25 pounds of manure. That's 2.5 million of manure a day in New York City. 2.5 million pounds of manure, horse manure a day, is equal to 1,100 tons of waste. 1,100 tons of manure. Things that you just nipped in inside, in just nipped in earlier. So imagine 1,100 tons of manure carpeting the streets of New York City. So to give you, to give you a perspective of the magnitude of 1,100 manure, horse manure, let's take something more familiar to you as a reference. I'm sure all of you have seen this um, in your life, right? This is a typical garbage truck that goes around the city. <coughs> A typical garbage truck that we use in the city to collect all the waste is about 7 meters long and has a capacity of 6 tons per load. So to address 1,100 tons of horse manure, you are looking at 183 units of this garbage truck. That is equivalent, line up back to back, that is equivalent to 1,281 meters. 1,281 meters long stretch of horse manure. That is also equivalent to 13 soft of you combined. So I invite you again, take a sniff. So now I hope that you have sniffed now and I have gotten your attention. Let's talk some trash. Well, that's introduced by the BMC. I'm here to talk trash to you. But we are not in the business of trash talking about our fellow roommates. Lecturers, <laughs> political parties, or government leaders, but I'm here to talk trash with you about the trash that you have produced, I have produced, and about the trash that you are going to produce and we are going to produce in the future. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have a similar crisis. 2018 Malaysians produce 38,000 tons of waste. 38,000 tons per day of waste. In 2016, globally, the statistic says 5.5 million. And by, if nothing changes, by 2050, our average waste generation is 9.3 million per day. But I rest assured you, this forecast is going to be wrong. The reason is because the incinerator in Singapore is designed to reach its max capacity by 2050. But based on the latest, latest statistics, the latest data, the insulator will not be able to cope by the year 2035. So if you're looking at 9.3 million a day by 2050, that's not going to happen. It's going to be in the teens, 15 or 20 million per day. So where are these thousands and millions going to? Sadly, this is where it's going to. This is not a fake photo, this is a real photo. If you have not been to a landfill, this is how a landfill looks like. Some countries does it better, but most are not. Right? Most are just downside. By early 1900s, Henry Ford introduced the first car. His first car, the Model T, which had revolutionized the mobility and transportation industry, which solved the horse manure crisis. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I proudly present to you to solve our crisis today, the Asher. And this time, this is coming from Malaysia. First things first, let me establish this. I'm not here to sell you something. I'm not here to tell you about a better laptop, a better gaming console, or a better facial skin care treatment <laughs> products. Right? This is about a very thoughtful solution that is realistic, practical, definitive, and effective. 
So the Asher does simply just this. It turns waste into ash. It reduces your waste from the original volume to nearly only 4%. Right? So instead of dumping one ton of waste, you're looking at only 40 kilos of ash. And this ash is in the form of non-hazardous, non-harmful, non-toxic, and inert. And in doing so, the asher is not consuming any acetylates. That means the asher does not use any diesel, does not use any petrol, any gas to burn, because there's no burning, there's no fire, there's no combustion. And the asher solved one of the biggest conundrum in waste management, which is sorting and segregation. We try to promote segregation from source, uh, blue beans, red beans, um, God knows what else color, color beans are there. <laughs> uh, but none of them will do that because eventually everything will go to one, one thing with bean, which is the land. Right? And the action does not require you to do that. Whatever that you have, whatever, how you visit it, just dump it into the ash. Done. And it becomes ash. And the ash, like I said, I repeat again, is inert, non harmful, and non hazardous. And this ash, not only that it is non harmful and non hazardous, it can be repurposed. It can be used as fertilizers, it can be used to make tanks. And all this takes 60 minutes. So, this, is, this page consists of a whole lot of information. This is when I ask you to run my second wish. But I will not be cruel. I want to ask you to memorize this and have a pop quiz later. <laughs> but instead, my second wish is for you to take back these six points. Number one is zero fuel, zero accelerants. No diesel, no petrol, no gas required. Remember that, the Asher of this Number two, it generates only 4% of residue in the form of non-harmful, non-toxic inner ash, which can be repurposed to make sand bricks and also fertilizers. Number three is a closed loop system. It has no secondary discharge. Whatever waste, whatever trash that you send to the asher, it stops there definitively. Nothing goes somewhere else. There's no water discharge, and the ash can be repurposed. Number four, in terms of cost, the Asher is ton for ton comparison. The Asher is 85% cheaper to purchase, to invest, and is 90% cheaper to operate and maintain. And of course, the fifth one is you do not need to sort, you do not need to segregate. Whatever that you receive, you just put it into the Asher, it turns into ash. That's it. And probably the most important one and the proudest of all, number six, this is. 100% Malaysian. Not Japan, not Sweden, not Germany. Right? This is a 100% invented, innovated, manufactured in Malaysia. And I would like to humbly and take this honor to introduce to you the inventor himself. Mr. Gordon T. is seated by the front. <laughs> by the way, um, Boys and girls, he's not an engineer, he's not a scientist, he's an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the Asher is not about frustration, it's not about speaking frustration, it's not about making hoo-ha, it's not about making publicity. The Asher is all about impactful solutions and meaningful applications. <laughs> the Asher essentially is your ultimate landfill diversion system. We can now stop sending trash to the land. We can now conserve land and protect the ecosystem, protect the forest, protect the animals. Plastic issues, which I'm sure all of you have been um, reading on the news, the plastic flavor of the month, for the Asia, it's nothing. If there's a buffet for plastic, eat all you can, the Asia is going to make the boss go bankrupt. <laughs> The Asher can also be used for post-disaster recovery, rebuilding, and of course at all islands. And in rural areas, uh, congested areas, uh, markets and bazaars, malls, offices, uh, car you see, I'm sure you generate tons of waste. Shame on you. <laughs> and then of course e-waste, and also poultry farms. 
and clinical ways and of course all other stuff. You see the the application and the use of the Azure, um, the, its limitation is only limited by our own imagination, creativity, and also will. Uh, the potential of it is immense. I'm sure all of you, once you get to know about this, you probably think where you can use this. Uh, I think some are going to be extra creative uh, to dispose of what evidence. <laughs> So I want to share some stories about the application of the Azure. This is a story about village in Marikina, Philippines. Uh, the, the local municipals removed the collection system in the village. Instead, they put in two Azure and incentivized the villages to bring in the waste and they, they incentivized the people with, for every 30 kilos that they send in, they incentivized with a 60 cents US dollar. Within three months, they clean up the entire village. Oh, that's all good thing that you, you, you probably think of, but it created a new crime. People start stealing rubbish, <laughs> right? Because there's no more rubbish on the street, so they still start going to the house, and then they start to take trash out of the house. So that's a problem. It's a good problem, though. <laughs> so the next story will be in Pune, India. This is a temple in Pune. Um, you know, the Indian rituals, same like Chinese, they use a lot of foods, foods, uh, coconuts, all that. So after the rituals, the workers will clean up the temples and use the uh, and collect all these coconuts, flowers, and fruits and put in the asher. And from the ash, they make sandwiches and repair the temples as well as making walking pavements around the temple. So the next story. Let's observe a moment of silence. Sad, but true. This is the Agitro and this is the story. We are a spoiled bunch. Right? The current management, the waste management system in the country is it's effective enough to keep our city clean. Right? It takes away our rubbish, it gets collected, it gets transported, it gets hidden and buried away in the valley of Mother Earth. Right? Everyone is happy. Out of sight, out of mind. Right? You are not affected because your your environment is clean and is trash free. Right? And for most of us it is the responsibility of the government and the authority to keep it clean and trash free for us. Right? So, but have you ever wondered where did your garbage from your kitchen or from the dormitory room goes to? The ugly truth? Well, this image epitomizes the ugly truth. Right? Things get swept under the carpet. Things get hidden away. Out of sight, out of mind. Okay? So Let's, let's imagine this. If only we can start to talk about responsibility and not hiding our ways away, what does it mean for Mother Earth and for the environment? What if it is not the, what if managing, treating, and disposal of waste is not just the government's responsibility? What if um, we can be part of it, play a bigger role, and be more involved. What if we can start stop talking about rights and talking more about our responsibility? What if you can play a bigger role in helping managing our waste and trash? Responsibility <coughs> is two part work: respond and ability. You can only discharge your responsibility if you are aware the ability. I cannot ask you to go to a war without availing you with the ability to use a gun or handle a hand grenade. Otherwise, it's just going to be suicide. So, if the model T was the ability to solve the horse mono crisis, then this is the ability. The Asher is the ability that empowers and enables us as individual, as community, as corporate captains, as government leaders, to respond responsibly. When I was first introduced to the Azure, and I got myself to understand and learn more about it, I was blessed with an ability. And the more, and it was so compelling that I resigned from my day job and started to talk rubbish. And the more rubbish that I talk, the, the, the more 
realization that I have of this grand scale ability. Imagine this one day, and I say one day, when we, are, we have successfully deployed the airship all around the world. It means that we have successfully availed equal opportunity to all population of world in the world to live in a clean, bright, and beautiful world. And that is the grand scale of this ability. So ladies and gentlemen, to close this, I ask you this question, take this question back with you. Now that you have this ability, how will you respond? I apologize for the smell in the beginning of my presentation, <laughs> but I'm not sorry. Um, I hope, I hope, the next time when you hold, you have a piece of trash in your hand, or your above, or you saw a pile of trash anywhere, think of the airship, or think of me, if you think whichever is sexy. <laughs> so, but hopefully, I hope you will think of the Asher, how it can help us to have a clean, cleaner, brighter, and more beautiful world. And thank you very much.